Hey there guys, Paul back with another quick lesson in the No Mod Shop class here on the School Zone. I want to take a moment and thank you guys. This series has really taken off. I've gained over a thousand subs just in the last week alone, so that rocks. For those of you who are spreading the word on Reddit and other social sites, I really appreciate it. Because of the fanfare around this mini series, I may be able to take a little more time off in August to finish up all the lessons I want to cover before I head back to the day job. So that's really cool. And then I'll get back to finishing the storyline and doing some other cool side missions I've planned. All good stuff. Okay, so on to today's lesson. In the comments of the Settlement Size Glitch video a few days ago, a viewer named Jennifer Montgomery suggested I change the color of the Nomad Shop Class sign in my backdrop here from white to something easier to see during sunny days. I couldn't agree more. In fact, I realized when I was editing that video that I was getting lost in the sunlight. I've been getting some really great interactivity in this miniseries so far, guys, so I just appreciate all that. What's even cooler about her comment is that it reminded me that I wanted to make a video about a neon lighting trick that could be part of the green circle lessons. I thought of it while I was at VidCon, but I forgot to write it down on my list and be, you know, because of all the stuff that was going on around VidCon. I have a couple more advanced lighting videos I'm planning for when we get to the blue square and black diamond lessons, but I had totally forgotten about this one. So without even realizing it, she jogged my memory about today's lesson. So thanks, Jennifer. So as you can see, I changed the neon lighting from white to yellow since it matches some of the signage below it and is also one of the school zone theme colors. I also built a little awning above the set, so to speak, just to make it easier to see. And there's one of those uh, Nixie tubes with the number seven on it, since that's the number of this video in the series. Cool, huh? But today's lesson is going to focus on the neon lighting, specifically some funky color combinations for neon lighting in your settlements. So in case you didn't know, neon lettering came with the Wasteland Workshop DLC Bethesda put out last year. If you haven't gotten your hands on that DLC, it includes bunches of cool building elements. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to add that to your repertoire. Cool. <laughs> I like it now. It's becoming a cool little tool shop area, you know, as well as a backdrop for the set, so to speak. It's awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do is sleep real quick and I'll be back when it's dark so we can uh, take a look at the other area I want to show you that has all the neon set up. All right, I'm back. So um, over here, I have set up a wall of neon lettering so you can see all the interactions I'm going to talk about. But before we get into all that, it's always fun to throw in a cool factoid here on the school zone. So what is neon anyway? Well, neon is actually one of the elements on the periodic chart. Number 10, I believe. It's a gas in its natural state, and scientists discovered in the late 1800s that if you uh, apply an electric charge to the gas, it gives off a glow. The normal glow for neon is orange. So when it comes to neon lights, manufacturers will seal the neon gas in glass tubes with electrodes on each end. The electric current is then passed through the gas in the tube and the glow shines through the glass. But if the normal glow for neon is orange, then how do they get the other colors? Well, good question. They actually add in or even substitute other gases as well. So like helium, for example, creates like a yellow glow, mercury creates a blue glow, and hydrogen creates the red glow. And with those primary colors, other colors can be created, which leads into the next part of the lesson. And that's what about those in the scientific and art community called color theory. And by the way, this is all just very brief explanations. You know, entire videos can be made about the factoids I cover on the School Zone. But I like to give you just a little bite-sized snack so you can look into this stuff more for yourself. You know, the School Zone is just the diving board into the pool of knowledge. <laughs> So according to color theory, you have three primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. Most of you probably know this much already. Combining those three colors, you get various secondary colors. For example, mixing blue and yellow gets you green, red and yellow gets you orange, and red and blue gets you purple. In the neon section of your workshop, you can see that Bethesda includes the primary colors. So red, yellow, and blue. And in between the primary colors, they went ahead and created the secondary colors, orange, green, and purple. However, there are more color combinations in color theory called tertiary colors. That's what you get when you combine a primary color and a secondary color. I believe combining two secondary colors just gets you brown, but when a primary color and a secondary color are combined, you get some diverse colors. They're subtle, but they can work. I think Bethesda knew this and did it intentionally because they actually allow you to place neon letters on top of each other, which is awesome. You're not blocked by that red no can do outline, you know? So what I'm gonna do now is show you some cool subtle combinations you can achieve by creating tertiary colors with your neon lighting. So we'll start over here. We've got green, and blue, and when you combine these two, you get the tertiary color called teal. Sometimes people will call it turquoise. All right, so check this out. Workshop mode, please. 
There we go. All right, so I'm gonna take this and move it up here. Place it right on top and I'll just exit out of there and you can see just a subtle difference, all right? So this is green, this is blue, and this is what you get when you combine them. So, you know, it's exactly the color that it reads there. It's like kind of a teal, all right? So I'll finish these off real quick. Sweet. So there we have teal. Okay, next we have blue on the top and purple on the bottom. And when we combine those two, we get violet. So workshop mode, slide these up. And once again, I'll just show you the difference there. See, that is cool. I like that color. That's cool. All right, I'll finish these off. Is that snapping, you know? All right, there we go. Okay, and there we have violet. That is cool looking. Almost looks like ultraviolet. Okay, next we have purple on the top and red on the bottom. And when you combine those, you get magenta. I'm not sure if there's, I mean, sometimes there's alternate names for these, but that, that's what I remember. There we go. See the differences there? That is so cool. Boom, that is hot, I like that. Okay, next we have red on the top and orange on the bottom, and that's gonna create uh, what they call vermilion. Sometimes it might be called crimson or something like that, but let's see the difference here. All right, now that one's a little more subtle of a difference, but you can see the difference there. All right, that is awesome. I'll go ahead and speed up the footage here. Okay, and there we have vermilion. So cool. Okay, and now we have orange on the top and yellow on the bottom, and that's gonna create amber. Once again, there may be other names for these, but that's what I remember that tertiary color called. So you can see the difference there. Okay, and last but not least, we have we have yellow on the top and green on the bottom. And when you combine those, the tertiary color is called lime. Sometimes it's also called chartreuse. Um, I think actually more commonly it's called chartreuse, but that was such a long name, I didn't feel like putting out all the letters for it. But that's the more common word for it is uh, chartreuse. And the, the other alternate name for it is lime. I actually talked about what chartreuse is in my last uh, Fallout 4 trivia walkthrough. I think chartreuse came up on one of the computers about the different movies that were playing in the uh, interstellar theater. You know, I think it was like the chartreuse slime or something like that. So check out that video if you want to learn what chartreuse actually is. But let's go ahead and combine these two and see what it looks like. Okay, once again, it's subtle, but you can see the difference there. All right, and that is definitely lime colored. That is pretty, That's that turned out better than I thought it would. That's pretty freaking awesome. Okay, and then over here, I just wanted to show you a few different things that you can do. So I don't think it makes a difference whether you put one color on top of the other, whether it's on the bottom or the top. I think uh, when they combine, it just creates a color. So in this case, I'm actually gonna combine blue and purple. All right, so here's blue on top of purple. And here's purple on top of blue. Okay, see, it looks pretty much the same to me. I don't think there's a difference. So I don't think the order matters. And then the other thing I was going to show you is that uh, you don't necessarily have to combine colors. Uh, you can actually add the same color to itself just to brighten it up. So check this out. These are all red. All right, see how it's a little brighter there? 
it actually makes much more of a difference during the day when you double up on them like that. Yeah, definitely brighter. And then this is just something I thought I'd show you. This is uh, what I did to the uh, Vault 42 sign. There's these little dashes in the punctuation section at the end of the neon menu, I think before you get to the numbers, either before or after you get to the numbers. But these make for kind of a cool little underline. And in the case of Vault 42, I gave it an underline and an overline. So thought I'd show you that's a cool little trick to use. Uh, as a matter of fact, for the Vault 42 sign, I used a different technique. I actually created my own version of orange by combining red and yellow instead of using the default orange that they give you in the in the workshop. So that's another thing you can do, you know, to really make the colors pop. They'll stand out more and they'll have their own distinct color that'll look a little different from the colors in the default. The only drawback is, is that uh, Neon uses a lot of resources, especially with your settlement size meter. So when you start adding a whole lot of Neon around your settlement, you're gonna see that size meter shoot up pretty fast. Now, in case you haven't seen it, I did make two videos about how to overcome the settlement size limit. So check those out. I'll leave descriptions down below. Very powerful technique, but it does come with some cautionary tales. So you'll want to stick around to the end of the video to hear all those. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this lesson in the No Mod Shop class. I really appreciate you guys spreading the word about these videos, especially over on Reddit. You know, whenever I post something on Reddit myself, it always gets deleted because it's considered self-promotion. But if you guys spread the word on Reddit, you know, it usually sticks. So keep on doing that and with enough new subscribers, I might be able to start doing this full time. That would rock. Throw a like on the video real quick. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you back for the next lesson. Happy building and class dismissed.